The mid-2000s, as we have already explored on the channel, was filled with RPG gems and some bonkers outings within the genre. Not just that, but also including some titles that are still highly praised and enjoyed this very day. With a standout title, of course, being The Elder Scrolls Oblivion, an RPG that not only is a classic, but also showcased some of the most unintentional humor the genre has to offer. Farewell. But not a year later, a game would release to take on Oblivion as one of the best RPGs of the time, but end up actually trading blows for its skill in random acts of hilarity. A title that when booting up I was convinced would never even come close to rivaling Oblivion for its crown. Ooh. Oh, it looks hard. Have a go. Oh shit. He's coming. He's oh, oh. Stranger in Talmont. You what? are a brotherhood man, eh? <laughs> Okay, this has to happen. Today, my friends, we take a journey into the utterly ridiculous Two Worlds. The game opens with an epic narration introducing the story of the world, becoming infested following the death of an orc god. A narration that sounds like James Earl Jones, but I couldn't find him credited anywhere for some reason. With the death of Azeroth, the continent became infested with the taint. Ah, if that is him, that'll be why. Yes, the malevolent force infecting the land is named the Taint. I'm sure a name that did not lead to anyone getting fired, and definitely one that I won't be getting a whole bunch of mileage out of during this video. We join our hero, traveling with his sister who has fallen on hard times. Tis just a flesh wound. We must ride on. And while investigating the area, returns to find her shockingly missing. After a time, our hero receives a letter from seemingly his sister's captors, ordering us to meet with them here in Thalmald. Mm, tis the harvest season here now. The harvest will be bountiful this year. Sadly, not all will be able to rejoice with us. Good day to you. Are you the village elder? Not before getting our first task of clearing out a nearby ruin, acting as more of a quickfire tutorial, giving us a chance to flail our sword around with some melee combat and loot some containers for our adventure. With our hero's comments on entering the battle, a small glimpse into just how strange things we're about to get with our time with this RPG. Looks like my in-laws. <laughs> With some supplies obtained, we are stopped by one of the townsfolk, who informs us that a tough stranger was seen nearby looking to seek us out. Mayhap a friend of yours? No, but he has something for which I have searched for a long, long time. Along with the clearly world-beating acting performances, what was enjoyable early on was the American delivery of Middle English, giving the whole situation a feeling of an out-of-control, over-budgeted Renfair. Forsooth, twas generous, but he now has lost the chance to save money. Making our way into the game's first settlement, we get a chance to catch up with some of the locals, as well as pick up a couple of quests. Two Worlds, just like its frequently compared competitor Oblivion, offers both main and a variety of side quest opportunities while playing through the game. As well as, as we saw earlier, that during conversations the action does not pause, giving way to a whole host of mid-conversation shenanigans. By that enemy still looking for a piece of our hero, along with other things. I will think about it. I will think about it. <laughs> what the fuck? Seeking out the mysterious hooded sender of the letter, we are told to collect all the pieces of a lost relic for the main plotline, and if done, our sister will be released. And to do so, beginning by obtaining some faster transportation by completing a nearby side quest, kindly provided to us by a large hairy chest with a man attached and getting another chance to experience the game's combat, which even for the time feels awkward and unintuitive on the melee side at least, mostly consisting of getting a hit or two and then leaping back and circling around for another chance. And the fun does not stop there, as upon being granted our first horse, we are greeted with an experience that feels more like a chimpanzee on a wheelbarrow than a noble hero on a steed. Next, we are introduced to the game's fast travel system, unlocked after a short introductory mission given by an old friend, once again getting a dose of the game's odd NPC dialogue. Farid, I should have known you would end up in a place like this. So the society finally had enough of you, eh? How true. My future in the society looks bleak. With some new gear and our main mission confirmed, it was time to venture out into the wider reaches of the game's world, which for the time does pretty well at instilling a feeling of adventure, with an active day-night cycle, an alternating weather system, and frequently featuring smaller settlements of townsfolk and bandits, doing well to add to immersion and flush out the game's world, just enough to let your guard down before throwing something bonkers back into the mix, such as a bandit leader hurling threats at our hero facing a completely different direction. You think you can scare me? 
Die, fool. Or some of the local wildlife returning to their household after a long day at work for some much earned rest. Welcome to our shop. We offer good prices for Brotherhood members. <laughs> oh my God. One thing Two Worlds does well is enjoyment in collecting and slowly upgrading your hero's gear, with a fair amount of options available on defeated foes and hidden throughout the world. With an odd yet highly user-friendly upgrade system, feeding the same types of gear to each other to make more powerful versions, and early on it was enjoyable just to work through some of the side quests, just to see what kind of upgrades and new options for gear might be uncovered. I went to somewhat gloss over the sometimes infuriating combat, chasing after archers trying desperately to make contact with the flailing attack animations. Such as its competitor, Two Worlds also features multiple ways to go about its quests, in addition to a reputation system for the game's factions. While the whole system feeling a lot more binary than its Elder Scrolls counterpart, but a good addition nonetheless, to bolster immersion and replayability. What's a shame with the game, however, a tad is the lack of creativity around the quests themselves, for the most part consisting of collecting or killing a number of things rather than anything to get the player thinking. Not too much to handle, but of course that's if you can somehow ignore the game's frequently confusing facial expressions. You have the healing potions? <laughs> His face. <laughs> Why are you looking like that? It's okay if you don't. Did you put them in the toilet again? The world's inhabitants themselves are quite inconsistent with their performances, with lines sounding like they're being read by an android that had the cord pulled halfway through downloading the human program. Do you seek me? Did Hargrast send you? He was right. I could not do it. Talking from within an invisible phone booth. Car told me of you. Is it true? And some flat out just getting details wrong. I prithee, help me to find my sister. All clashing against our hero's dialogue, which sounds like it'd be more suited in a trailer covering the next Marvel movie. I have heard this fable from my parents many times. I know we had some kind of relic in the family long time ago, but we no longer have it. That is no way to talk about grandma. Good morrow, sir. You have the face about you that tells me you're about to carry out the obligatory but annoying call to action to help the channel, to like the video and subscribe, etc. That's right. For super. Oh, thank God for that. With a number of levels under our belt, completing a whole host of quests, some beautifully named, such as Bring Me Some Taint, our adventure began taking us to the wider reaches of the game's world. Two Worlds features a large map with a variety of alternative feeling locations, all with of course their own quirky elements. The large city of Kudinar with its markets and statues, also featuring a fruit bowl portal to another dimension. Oh, you scoundrels all the way to the eastern-themed settlement of Ashos, whose NPCs are by far the most interesting, not only in their quests, but behaviour. What's going on there? With the location even when being invaded by enemy forces, influencing its attackers to swap out their weapons for a broom in the heart of battle. Overlooking the oddities for a moment, Two Worlds for the time does well with its own design, with some epic-looking tombs and locations. Wandering off to explore and delve into the game's various dungeons feels rewarding, not only for potential gear that may be uncovered, but getting a chance to see the environments on offer, and did at least for a time give me further reasons to mount up and ride off in search of additional spells and to take in the sights. Further progression in Two Worlds is done via leveling and adding stat points into three disciplines, the tried and true strength, dexterity and willpower, for melee ranged and magic builds with a number of abilities both passive and active also available for each, some of which feel more likely to get you killed, with a hilariously crap AoE melee attack, stacked up with abilities that feel insanely powerful, with the critical strikes absolutely destroying enemies, which made for a nice turn of the tables after spending quite some time with the game on the receiving end. Who turned up? Oh. Where Two Worlds really excels is with its magic, with a huge amount of spells to seek out for five different schools, summoning temporary companions to turn the tide of a battle, or burning and zapping your enemies with even additional augmentation spells to supercharge preferred modes of destruction, the magic for me being a driving force in exploration and completing quests, with the potential chance of gifting another magical ability to try out. RPG mainstays such as sneaking and stealing are available to level, with our hero going full-on goblin mode to sneak around and do a bit of pickpocketing, as well as having the option to use and craft various traps to use in combat, some of which being quite powerful, and given the game can be quite hard at places at certain levels, add some more strategy to encounters. Just don't go leaving them lying around, as can easily lead to an unfortunate accident getting in the way of quest progress.
Crafting does not stop at traps, as the player is also able to use the game's alchemy system to combine a whole host of ingredients to cook up some potions to boost stats and recover resources, something that I didn't really use a whole bunch in my time playing through the game, but it was nice to have nonetheless, and I'm sure hugely helpful on higher difficulties and can also be leveled. As with a lot of RPGs for me at least, the most fun is had when facing situations on the back foot, as it leads to requiring a bit of planning and strategy over just steamrolling over camps and enemies. And with various combat styles, traps and spells, Two Worlds gives the player a lot of tools to do so. I even on a number of occasions kited a nearby group of wildlife or other types of enemies back to my targets of choice to mix things up and give me more chances of coming out on top. Overall, as I quickly started to suspect, I did enjoy my time finally playing through this game, but not all for the reasons the developers intended. As a contender amongst the early 2000s RPGs, Two Worlds for me, like many others at the time, feels very middle of the road. There are some standout elements such as the game's magic system, as well as its replayability and exploration, but for every exceptional element there was almost always something there to either make me face palm, such as the game's script. They could catch a cold. Here is your cold. Gold. I thank you. Or a technical issue that sapped me out of all the immersion. Still, I would like to know who killed him. What? Well, you're quite right, buddy. At this point, I have no words either. The game does not even come close to having as much charm as something like Oblivion, or a notable soundtrack to give the experience for the character. But the ridiculous choice for the voice of the hero and other characters, the utter insanity of some of the NPCs, and just the frequency of moments that took me completely by surprise and had me doubled over laughing, along with some of its stronger RPG elements did make it an enjoyable playthrough, even today. Whereas with some older RPG titles I would be propelled forward by wanting to progress the story in an interesting storyline, Two Worlds kept me engaged by wondering and trying to foresee just what might happen next, either within the parameters of reality or not. A considerable more amount of RPG features than titles such as Fable, but with a fraction of the charm. Without a shadow of a doubt, truly one of the most unintentionally funny experiences I've encountered, and for me at least on par with Oblivion's reputation for it, if not for a range of additional reasons. More than likely made all the better when in the game's multiplayer mode. I can't help but feel the two worlds being the perfect name for this RPG, epically riding off into the sunset on the back of an utterly hilarious experience. Thank you so much for watching. Have you played Two Worlds or any other mental RPGs? As always, I'm keen to get your thoughts down in the comments. I'd like to give a big shout out to the channel members who help in supporting the channel. If you're interested in joining as a channel member for all sorts of perks, including exclusive videos, the info is down in the description. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, Jesus, calm down. Oh, dear Lord, what have I done?